advancements in reproductive technologies raises questions about, you know, who is a parent, what is a parent, how many parents can there be, how many legal parents can there be, right? An issue which is being debated right now, I think, in California. Is biology necessary to parenting? Can you create your parental roles? Can you be a parent in the absence of legal recognition? I did a small qualitative study of 20 to lesbian and gay parents in Florida where we looked at them sort of right after the gay adoption ban was lifted at their experiences and perceptions of how their lives had changed and in most cases it was really significant living um, without legal recognition parenting children fostering children whom they could not actually adopt was extremely stressful and very demoralizing I would say for these parents um, and, and to have their, your child say why can't you adopt me? Why can't you be my real parent? Well, it's a stupid law. Thinking about geography is really important, you know, that, you know, not just legal status, but just, you know, rural versus urban. You know, a lot of gay people don't live in gay meccas, especially those with kids. And so there are all kinds of assumptions about what gay people with parents look like. The solution for people that people say, well, why don't they just move? That's, it's such a classed, question. You know, a lot of people can't afford to move. They don't have the resources to move. They have jobs in a certain area. They have family support in a certain area. And also it's, it's ignorant of the fact that there are a lot of actually positive things about living in, say, a rural area that people don't recognize. Sexual minorities who parent are parenting. They might have the ability to put a spin on parenthood or do things a little differently or help recreate parenting roles. So for example, you know, and with two men raising a child, there aren't, you know, this sort of notion of what a female does or what a male does is not is relevant or directly applicable because two men have to fulfill, presumably, you know, both parental roles. And so it's un unlike what some people might think, they don't have a conversation and say, I'm going to be the man and you can be the woman, but rather it happens much more naturally and fluid the way it does, I think, in many heterosexual parents parenting relationships now, where people do what they are most comfortable doing, or they draw on their strengths, or they divide things based on interest. It's this notion that kids with gay parents or queer parents grow up in a community that um, sensitizes them to issues around, you know, minority status, what it means to be gay, the gay community, and so they sort of become, a, uh, you know, they may not personally identify as, as queer, um, they may identify as straight, but they are they might see themselves as culturally queer. So having a queer orientation to things, which could mean a variety of things. It may mean that they um, want really egalitarian relationships or that they're really they have a lot of gay friends or that they will, you know, um, you know, enjoy kind of what would be considered stereotypical activities um, associated with the gay community, that they, um, feel a sense of pride when they go to a gay pride community. So they feel identified with that community based on who their parents are and maybe who important adults were in their community growing up, not based on their own sexual orientation. So it's a community orientation as opposed to a personal sort of sexual orientation. Plenty of children are teased for all different kinds of reasons and we don't tell certain kinds of parents they can't have children because their children might be teased is sort of the way I think about that. We don't tell racial minority parents, you know, your child might be teased because of their race. We don't tell poor parents, well, not explicitly, you can't have children um, because your child will be teased for not having cool clothes or, you know, so it's very specific that we think that research has to sort of establish that these kids won't be teased in order for these parents to be allowed to parent. It's a very strange idea to me. Um, but that being said, you know, if children are teased, that has very little to do um, with their parents' sexual orientation. It has to do with society and societal homophobia, and that's what needs to change, right?